They like to say down south that it's tougher to win the SEC championship than it is to win the national championship. Mark Rogers TV on the big one. Georgia and Alabama, all of college football's eyes are focused on the Georgia Dome this Saturday night in Atlanta. First, we make the case for Georgia, and we start with a Bulldog defense. And we look at the numbers since Sean Williams called out his teammates. The fine defensive back earlier in the year looked around and saw that his teammates were soft. And the unit has stepped up ever since. In its past five games, Georgia's given up just 43 points. Now, to be fair, the opponents in the last five games have not been stellar. Georgia's faced a softer portion of its schedule. But also, to be fair, this Georgia defense, after returning nine starters from a defensive unit that dominated LSU in the first half of last year's SEC championship game, suffered a lot of injuries earlier in the year and also player suspensions and starters missed 14 starts in the first four games for Georgia but since then Georgia has stepped it up and they've got playmakers all over the place first in the secondary with three seniors including safety Bakari Rambo with three interceptions we talked about Sean Williams and also Damian Swan a sophomore cornerback who's got two picks and two sacks at a linebacker, you've got Christian Robinson and Alec Ogletree. They've combined for 15 tackles for loss, but the big man is Jarvis Jones. Linebacker extraordinaire, one of the best in the land. 19 and a half tackles for loss and 10 and a half sacks. We have not covered the Georgia talent on defense. It may be the best in the country. Georgia's defense, this is game time for them to step up and be dominant. Point number two for Georgia is all that talent on offense at the skill positions. They've got some game changers. First in the backfield at running back with the two freshmen, Keith Marshall and Todd Gurley. Gurley rushing for almost 1,200 yards and 14 touchdowns thus far. Gurley uh, having the big season and Marshall as well at 720 yards and eight touchdowns. And on the outside, Aaron Murray has weapons and speed to burn starting with uh, Tavares King at wide receiver. He, for the second straight year at Georgia, has led the team in touchdowns, receiving with eight. He's got 34 receptions, and the senior needs to have a big game against the Alabama secondary. Point number three is Aaron Murray. Yes, this is his time to shine. 3,200 yards passing, 30 touchdowns, seven picks, 67% completion percentage. He owns the Georgia record book but now he needs to step up on the big stage. He's a precision passer who needs time to go through his reads and make the right decision, but he can make all the NFL-type throws. He could be a great quarterback, but he has not been to this point. He has spent this week studying film like he has all the time. He's known for studying film. He goes into each game prepared, but especially in not talking to the media, he is focused on this championship game and this could be Aaron Murray's coming out party. Think Peyton Manning after so many failures earlier in his career. Think Peyton Manning in the AFC Championship game against the Patriots in 06. That could be Aaron Murray. All right, now we make the case for the Alabama Crimson Tide, like Georgia at 10-1 this season. And our point number one for the Crimson Tide was our last point for Georgia, Aaron Murray. Thus far in his career, he has not stepped up to the big game situation. Uh, last year, did not play well in the SEC Championship game against LSU and also poorly in the Outback Bowl against Michigan State. This season, Aaron Murray in Florida's two big, big games against, uh, in Georgia's two big games against Florida and South Carolina, Aaron Murray at minus 50% completion percentage, just one touchdown and four interceptions. And the Alabama defense, the one time the defense looked vulnerable this year, it was, of course, against Johnny Football, Johnny Manziel in Texas A&M and the Tide's lone loss. Well, Johnny Manziel can extend plays with his feet. He rushed for 92 yards in that game. That's not Aaron Murray. He can't uh, present that kind of threat to the Alabama defense. Okay, point number two for Alabama is its quarterback, A.J. McCarron. 67% passer and, very impressively, 25 touchdowns against just two picks. He's gone from game manager to game changer when needed, and that was needed against LSU this year. Of course, only had 92 yards passing as the, the Bama offense was somewhat ineffective until that final drive 
A.J. McCarron stepped up. He did it last year in the national championship game when he was nearly flawless against LSU as well. This guy is poised, he's smart, he makes the right decisions, and he plays well on the big stage. Next for Alabama is the often overlooked best part of this team. It's the offensive line. You've got Barrett Jones at center. He's all everything. He's a smart, tough player who makes all the right calls, and he is a big game NFL prospect at center, Barrett Jones. You've also got DJ Fluker as well as Chance Warmack on the right and left side. The Alabama offensive line, again, might be the best in the land, and any football person will tell you the game is won in the trenches, and Bama has a huge advantage right there, while Georgia's offensive line is somewhat suspect. All right, next for Alabama is simply that Bama is Bama. Since emerging again as a national power under Nick Saban in 2008, the tide has usually risen to the occasion. Going head-to-head uh, -head with Florida in the 08 and 09 SEC championship games, breaking through in 09, of course, winning the national championship. Again, last season, winning the national championship, and even in the loss to LSU, they outplayed the Tigers in that game, and of course, it was poor special teams and poor place kicking that lost the game for the Tide 9-6. Bama under Nick Saban. This team has been poised, tenacious, nasty on defense, makes smart plays, smart decisions, and plays well in the clutch. And now to our final point for Alabama, it's that guy, Nick Saban. He is the best in the business, and no, he's not got seven weeks to prepare, but of course, he is working overtime to prepare for this SEC championship game against a very talented Georgia team. Nick Saban's got this thing almost running on autopilot, you want to say, in a very inexact science of coaching 18 to 22 year olds. Nick Saban's got it down just about as good as possible. The psychology of football and also the X's and O's. And while I applaud Nick Saban, I also want to stick up a little bit for Mark Richt as well. He's taken a beating this week as not being Nick Saban and maybe being a liability for Georgia. Mark Richt is in the position that he is for good reason. He has built a strong program at Georgia. He has coached well. No, he is not the best in the business, probably not in the top five or ten, but he's a capable football coach. But Nick Saban, we give him the decided edge in this one. I went into the research on this game, and having watched Alabama and Georgia both play a lot of football this season in their bigger games, uh, I was really weighing back and forth and back and forth on this one because I think Georgia might come through. But after thinking about the offensive line dominance for Alabama, Nick Saban, the head coach, and A.J. McCarron not making mistakes in that running game that we didn't even talk about at Alabama, and of course the defense, maybe not up to the standards of 2011, but still a fine Alabama defense. we got to go with the tide in this one, and we're picking Alabama to to defeat Georgia 30 to 20. Tied 30 and the Bulldogs 20. Now we need to hear from you. Please speak up on the SEC Championship game. We need to hear from you. Your picks, your analysis on Mark Rogers TV.